Most protein cookie dough recipes have a major flaw. There is always at least one ingredient that you would never see in a regular cookie dough, making the final product mm. taste off. The cookie dough recipes in this video will taste like you bought them from the store, which is exactly why I have eaten them for two years straight. Let's get into it. You will start with the classic. Let's get the dry ingredients together first. Grab a bowl and add 80 grams of AP flour. Before adding any other dry ingredients, the FDA recommends we heat up our flour. You can either heat it up in the microwave in 30 second intervals until it reaches 160 degrees, or you can put it on a sheet pan and into the oven for five minutes at 350 degrees. I personally don't do either, but I like living life on the edge, so don't be like me and heat up your flour. Then we will add two scoops of a vanilla whey casein protein powder. Now, in the testing process, I made four cookie doughs with different protein powders. My girlfriend and I performed a plethora of blind taste tests over several days. At the end, I thought the cookie dough with the PE Science vanilla protein powder tasted the best, but the Gorilla Mode vanilla cookie dough was my girlfriend's favorite. Taste buds are different for everybody, and that is to be expected. If you already have either of these, they will work perfectly. If not, you can click the link in the pinned comment and use code E4CM to pick some up for yourself and get 10% off your order while doing so. There are no rules in the kitchen, but if you do use another protein powder, just realize I am not sure how the consistency, texture, and flavor of the final product will taste. Then add 1.5 grams of salt. Take a whisk and mix all the dry ingredients thoroughly and put them off to the side. Grab another large bowl, put it on a scale, and add 21 grams of butter. Yes real butter. Just like using a shitty tasting protein powder, if you use I can't believe it's not butter or other butter alternative, you will not get the same cookie dough flavor you are looking for. I recommend unsalted Kerrygold butter if you can afford it. If you only have a salted butter on hand, that's okay, just skip the salt from earlier in the recipe. We have to melt the butter, so put it in the microwave in 10 second intervals until it is completely melted. Then we will add our eggs, which is another sensitive topic for people. For the most safety, you should either use pasteurized eggs from a store or you should pasteurize your own eggs at home. From what I understand, it is easy to do and only takes 10 to 15 minutes with a YouTube video guiding you along the way. I am personally going to be a risky Ricky and roll the dice. I have eaten medium rare steaks, sushi, and uncooked cake batters and cookie doughs since I was a wee young lad. I have never run into an issue, so I'm going to keep this wild lifestyle going and just put my raw eggs right into my wet ingredients. Random fact of the day, you have a higher chance of being injured by a toilet than getting salmonella from raw eggs. Add two whole eggs, one egg white, 4.2 grams of vanilla extract, 24 grams of granulated swerve, and 24 grams of brown sugar swerve to your bowl. What is great about swerve, real name urethritol, is that it is zero or near zero calories per 100 grams. It also causes the least, if any, GI stress out of all artificial sweeteners, and it has been shown not to have any long-term negative health consequences in the research thus far. If you prefer a different sweetener, feel free to use that, but sweetness varies from one sweetener to another, so you may need to adjust the amount you use. Now that all of the wet ingredients are in the bowl, whisk until very well combined. We want an even flavor throughout, so make sure you put a little elbow grease into it. We're going to add the dry ingredients into three even parts. Once the first part is added, whisk it until smooth, then add your second part. You will notice that the consistency is getting much thicker. Once smooth, add your third part. Now is where the cookie dough gets stuck in the whisk. At this point, it is time to switch over to a spatula to finish the recipe off. What I like to do to make sure everything is really mixed in thoroughly is press the dough all around the sides of the bowl and then scrape it off. I usually do this three to five times. Forewarning, this will give you a massive forearm pump, but will definitely be worth it once you are enjoying the best cookie dough on YouTube. At this point, it wouldn't be cookie dough without chocolate chips, so we will add 21 grams of mini chocolate chips into the mix. Minis are better so that we can guarantee that we get chocolate chips in every single bite. Mix the dough around until the chocolate chips are dispersed evenly. Put your beautiful cookie dough into an airtight container and you are finished. You could enjoy this right now and it will taste fabulous. But for best results, I would put this in the fridge and let all the flavors come together over a 24 hour period. This will take the flavor to the next level. Trust me. 
Get a bowl on a scale and add 90 grams flour, 72 grams snickerdoodle protein, 2 grams cinnamon, and 1.5 grams of salt. Again, I did a side-by-side -side blind taste test for the protein choices, and the PE Science Snickerdoodle ended up winning by a landslide. However, PE Science Vanilla still tasted great, so if you only have that at home, feel free to use it in this recipe as well. Mix the dry ingredients until thoroughly combined. Grab another large bowl, place it on a scale, and add 28 grams of butter. Place that in the microwave in 10 second intervals until the butter is melted. Then add two eggs, one egg white, 4.2 grams vanilla extract, and 48 grams of granulated swerve or your sweetener of choice. Then mix together until well combined. Eggs are too expensive nowadays, so don't just throw those extra egg yolks out. I would save them for my apple pie ice cream that is coming out very soon. Now add your dry ingredients into your wet ingredients in three parts similar to the first recipe. For a little bit of an easier time mixing these together, you can use a mesh strainer to quickly sift your dry ingredients during each part. Once your whisk starts to become useless, switch over to a spatula. Using the spatula, push the mixture along the wall of the bowl and scrape down the sides. Repeat this three to five times. Place your finished dough in an airtight container and enjoy the forearm pump. You can indulge right away, or you can wait 24 hours for peak flavor. To add an even bigger depth of flavor, mix 4 grams of sugar with a half gram of cinnamon and top your dough right before eating. For less than 20 calories, you get the same texture of cookie dough that you would get from the store and perfectly wraps this recipe with a bow. I saved the dark horse for last. Grab a bowl and to it add 60 grams flour, 40 grams powdered peanut butter, and 65 grams of PE Science peanut butter cookie protein powder. The most important part of any recipe I create is that when you taste it, you go straight to Flavor Town. So similar to the last two recipes, I compared four protein powders and in both my and my girlfriend's opinion, Ew. peanut butter cookie was the best. Peanut butter cup was a close second though, and if you want a more chocolatey peanut butter type of cookie dough, then that is the one you should go with. Combine the dry ingredients and grab another large bowl and add 30 grams of peanut butter and 14 grams of butter. Put your bowl in the microwave for 10 second increments until both of the ingredients are melted. Mine usually takes about 45 seconds or so. Before we add anything else, we need to mix the butter and peanut butter together. If not, the peanut butter will harden and not mix in correctly. Doing this will also make them much easier to combine with the rest of the wet ingredients. Then add 2 eggs, 1 egg white, 4.2 grams vanilla extract, 28 grams granulated swerve, and 28 grams brown sugar swerve. Mix until everything is the same consistency. Then start mixing in the dry ingredients in three parts. I actually would recommend that you use a strainer for this particular dough. The powdered peanut butter gets clumped up, and doing so would make it five times easier to mix everything in. Just try not to knock the strainer into your bowl like I did. If possible, make sure the consistency of the cookie dough is smooth before adding in another part. Once the whisk stops working, switch over to a spatula and push the dough onto the sides and scrape it off. Repeat three to five times. Once everything is well combined, put it into a container and put it in the fridge. For the best flavor, a 24-hour wait is recommended, but whenever you are ready to eat, heat up four grams of peanut butter and drizzle it over the top. Now you have real peanut butter in every single bite of cookie dough, and you cannot beat it. These cookie doughs have up to 14 times more protein than the store-bought counterpart, and you can eat double the amount for the same calories. My advice would be to start by making the original cookie dough and go down the line. If your dough is waiting in the fridge and you have some spare milk and cereal on hand, I can show you how to turn it into ice cream in this video here. Each pint has about 150 calories and only takes three minutes to make. By the way, if you make any of these cookie doughs, please tag me on Instagram or leave a review in the comments below so people know it's worth making. Until next time, deuces.